A police shut down near McCarran Airport tonight. It looked like a bomb, but was it bogus or real danger in a pipe? We'll show you why cops weren't taking any chances. No dreams, just nightmares of what Jean could bring ashore. She's the latest twisting dangerous storm aiming at the U.S. coastline. Michael Jackson is going to court again tomorrow to stare down the woman accusing him of molestation. We'll show you what to expect. And the local school district is hiring a cheating cop who will try to stop students from using technology to get the right answers. That's the lineup tonight. All that and breaking news. We are ready to get started. It's Action News live at 11 right now. And good evening. It's 11 o'clock. I'm Trisha Keen. Hi, I'm Ross Becker. Right off the top tonight, a mess at McCarran. Was it a bomb or just something that looked like a bomb? At first, they didn't know. So what they did is they took action. An area near the airport was blocked off. One of the roads, rent-a-car road that takes people in and out of the airport, was shut down. It's our top story on this Thursday night. Road closures, the bomb squad, and right now an end to the potentially dangerous mystery. Action News reporter Andy Rosgen, live at the airport. Andy. Ross, I just talked to the guy who found this device here at Thrifty Car Rental. Scared the heck out of him. And it turns out the culprit is a guy who probably should have known better. An employee at Thrifty was doing a normal check of the car after it was turned in. Located, located a device uh, that appeared to be uh, uh, a pipe bomb. Police quickly sealed off the area. Some people trying to turn their rental cars in had to wait for up to two hours. But traffic to the airport itself ran smoothly because those roads were not closed. Eventually, we heard a loud boom, but all Metro will say is... Bomb squad. Uh, they go up and do their investigation and uh, do, use their skills to render the device safe. And that's what they did. But the incident left some people jumpy. An employee at a neighboring rental company called police over for a suitcase that had been left in a car. Turns out that was just a suitcase. And it turns out that that was not a pipe bomb. It was actually a police training device that a Texas police officer was using as a demonstration. He was in Laughlin all week long for a Texas or for a police training session there, and that's why he left it in his car accidentally. Reporting live outside the airport, Andy Rose from Channel 13 Action News. The retrial of the century, at least in Nevada, is the Ted Binion murder case. A year ago, the Nevada Supreme Court threw out convictions against Sandy Murphy and Rick Tavish. Now, Clark County is gearing up for this high-profile retrial next month. New Tonight Action News reporter Mike Delostrito with a look at this bizarre murder case. Mike? And Trisha, tonight is the eve of the sixth anniversary of Ted Binion's death. And the people here at the courthouse really only have their final few weeks of preparation. They've been through all of this before. Now, they're about to do it again. Las Vegas casino mogul Ted Binion, more legendary in death than in life. The story behind his death, more Hollywood movie than standard homicide investigation, and the publicity surrounding the murder case, more than Nevada has ever seen before. And it's all about to happen again. We kind of look at these high profile trials like a train. They're going to pick up steam and we need to get ahead of the train so that we're ready for it. Their plans are coming together. Lessons learned after the first trial. Binion's live-in girlfriend Sandy Murphy and her boyfriend Rick Tabish tried together and convicted. It's a trial that was seen on TV around the world, and you can expect a repeat this time around. And it won't just be the media and family and friends packing this courtroom. It's also going to be one high profile tourist destination. They're moving the trial into a courtroom like this one on the first floor. It's bigger than Judge Bonaventure's upstairs with enough seating for more than 100 people. But to get those seats, there might be a lottery for the public. And to get a seat on the jury, well, that'll mean several rounds of questions and possible sequestration. You know, we're all going to be testing ourselves again to see that we can do this right. And jury selection begins on this retrial on Monday, October 11th. The trial in all is expected to last up to one month. We're live at the Clark County Courthouse. Mike Delostrito, Channel 13 Action News. Some present day crime now. A 22 year old accused of killing part of his family showed his face in court today. Richard Lentino is now formally charged with two counts of murder for killing his mom, his sister, and one count of murder for killing his baby nephew. A co-worker found 48 year old Elaine Lentino, her daughter Megan, and her 19 month old grandson in a condo near Fort Apache in Flamingo. The coroner says the mom was strangled, the other two stabbed. Lentino was arrested later that 
night, and cops say he has a mental disorder. Cops are looking for a hit and run killer following an accident involving someone on a bike. Tito Diaz Hilaria was hit by a car on Arville near Har Harmon around 5 a.m. He was riding a bike on the right shoulder and was hit from behind. If you have any information on this case or was in the area at the time, give police a call. A violent break in at a cash loan store. Within minutes, a man was inside taking money and roughing up female employees. This is surveillance video from the Coster's cash loan store. Cops say the man with the gun broke in and left with cash, but not before he got violent with the employees tugging their hair and putting more of a scare in them than anything else. They're extremely emotional, afraid for their babies at home, having nightmares about, you know, this guy breaking into their home at night, and it's just been extremely traumatic for them. And cops are looking for the man in this video. They think he may strike again. And if you have any information, contact police. Treasures Strip Club bumping and grinding back in business tonight. It was closed down last night at midnight. The doors opened at 6 tonight, but now no alcohol. The city council denied the club its liquor license. It was under the gun after dancers were accused of soliciting prostitution and one was convicted. Lawyers for the owners say they're considering their options and it could mean suing the city. Well, the storms just keep coming one right after another. Tonight, there is a new threat in the Caribbean, Jean. Jean is a tropical storm right now, but that could all change as she gains strength. Heading to Florida, she's already left her mark on the Dominican Republic, killing a baby and forcing thousands from their home. Nate Tannenbaum is tracking Jean. He's in the Action Weather Center tonight. Nate? Patricia, Jean did have a brief period of time as, as a hurricane already. It was downgraded to a tropical storm. The, this, by the way, is what's left of Ivan dropping off just 6 to 10 inches of rain on the northeast. But Jean, maximum winds of 70 miles an hour, moving to the west-northwest at 6 miles an hour. The current path of Jean would take her right to the border between Georgia and South Carolina. It would spare Florida, and it's still several days away. Now, one of the questions we're being asked is, what's the difference? Why is there some kind, sometimes a hurricane with a J name on one side of the world? and on the other side. The answer is there are two different lists of hurricane names. There's Javier and then there was there's um, there was Jean and they're all continuing to be a factor. We're going to keep monitoring all of them here in action weather. There was also Ivan. Remember Ivan? Well, he's lost a lot of steam, but he did a lot of damage. Here's what we know tonight. The hardest hit areas, Alabama and Florida. 23 deaths, most in Florida due to uh, tornadoes from Ivan. Heavy rains also falling in Georgia and Tennessee right now. Eric Hong is on damage patrol. With power still out for much of the central Gulf Coast, storm victims are spending another night in the dark. Power crews headed into heavily damaged communities while National Guard troops enforced curfews. Keeping watch over things, getting things back to normal, um, keeping intersections going, keeping businesses guarded, and uh, I've told you, keeping honest people honest. Ivan caused widespread flooding from Louisiana to Alabama to Florida. The hurricane's ferocious winds snapped tree trunks like toothpicks and turned buildings inside out. Many say they underestimated the powerful storm. In downtown Pensacola, part of the Harbor Inn's roof now sits across the street. Gulf Shores, Alabama, boats that were moved indoors for protection were crushed anyway. Boats that were not dry docked ended up in trees or at the bottom of the sea. President Bush plans to survey the damage in Alabama and Florida this weekend. It'll be his third trip to hurricane-ravaged areas in a month. Eric Hong, ABC News, Pensacola, Florida. Turning now to the Michael Jackson scandal, a very big day in court tomorrow for the singer's sexual assault trial. Jackson's lawyers arriving in a Santa Maria court today in front of photographers and a diehard Jackson fan. Expect more of them tomorrow in court. Jackson will come face to face with his accuser's mother, who's expected to take the stand. One of the issues also tomorrow is a search of Jackson's Neverland Ranch. Last November, uh, that search took place and investigators took thousands of things from the ranch, claiming it as evidence. And Jackson's lawyer wants some of that stuff kept out of the trial. The pre-trial hearing will determine what evidence will be allowed. And Michael Jackson's family will be together to support him at the ranch tomorrow, and from there they will go to court. Eight or nine family members by his side. It's expected to be the largest family turnout since the case started. And the reunion, Golden Beauties in Los Angeles. You know, there are a lot of them, but these are extra special. The Emmy statuettes arriving in star fashion, ready to go for the annual Emmy Awards. They're all packed up tonight. 
but uh, there's one coming out of the packages. But come on Sunday, they're going to be in the hands of the stars. You can see the award show right here on Channel 13 at 8 o'clock on Sunday night. Love the Emmy. Should be a good show, too. Should be. All right, well, new information about what may have happened to Roy Horn the night of his dreadful tiger bite. Tonight, the Roy tapes and what they reveal about the mishap on the way to the hospital. Then, why the cheating police may be going to a school near you. Nathan Tannenbaum back at the Weather Center talking about our local conditions. Going to get very windy around here and high temperatures may be as low as the upper 70s. We'll tell you all about it coming up in Action Weather. And the Donald comes out swinging in just a few minutes while he's fighting back at ABC. You're watching Action News live at 11. is quoted as calling it a near-death experience. The tiger bite on stage last October during a performance. His recovery continues and now there are 911 tapes from that night. They're out and Action News reporter Heather Angel talked with a newspaper columnist Norm Clark about his conversations with Roy. Siegfried and Roy, two of the best illusionists in the business. Then October 3rd, 2003, a tiger bites Roy on stage and everything changes in an instant. Roy actually talked about remembering being dragged off stage and, and saying, uh, God, I just hope this is a bad nightmare. He was rushed to UMC Hospital where he had a stroke. The doctors uh, truly saw him flatline while he was on the operating table and that they for, I believe he was gone for about a minute and they brought him back. He described uh, having um, a, a near-death experience, seeing a bank of white light and seeing all of his favorite big cats. The road to recovery has been a rocky one for Roy. His left side is paralyzed. That's going to be the, that's going to be the biggest challenge. Uh, his his left hand is is still paralyzed. I know they're working a, a lot on that. Norm says Roy is learning to walk again, and his amazing recovery so far is a testament to his inner strength. I talked to him two weeks ago at the uh, Havana nightclub. His his talking is really coming back. His speech is really improving. He, Siegfried said if he if his left arm doesn't come back that Siegfried will be his left arm. I thought that was maybe one of the top two or three most touching things that were said. Without any question, they're going to remain a part of the fabric of Las Vegas entertainment. Heather Angel, Channel 13 Action News. To vote 2004 now and the fight for the veteran votes in Nevada, Democratic presidential candidate John Kerry here in Las Vegas to sway the vote. Kerry spoke before the National Guard Association, the same group that President Bush spoke to earlier this week. Today, John Kerry charged that President Bush failed a fundamental test of leadership by ignoring some simple facts about the situation in Iraq. He didn't tell you that with each passing day, we're seeing more chaos, more violence, indiscriminate killings. He didn't tell you that with each passing week, our enemies are actually getting bolder. Well, the president served in the National Guard, but Kerry's team says the senator's experience in Vietnam makes him the better candidate. The Bush camp says Proud Kerry keeps flip-flopping on the war. Days after the president was in Las Vegas, his team is still in Nevada. Vice President Dick Cheney at a rally in Reno John today Kerry telling supporters in a time of conflict, no Nevadans less. need a leader that stands strong on the issues and does not waver. We have breaking news out of Iraq tonight. We are getting reports into action news from the Associated Press that at least 30 people were killed in Fallujah. More than 40 people, mostly uh, women and children, are hurt right now. Fallujah is in southern Iraq. It is uh, an Iraqi insurgent stronghold. It's an area of constant violence and bombings. Again, we're getting word of an attack in Fallujah tonight. We'll keep you posted here on Action News as soon as we get more information. And some new information tonight about the war on terrorism. A report out by uh, the Iraq Survey Group says there are no signs Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. But it also says he had programs he wanted to jumpstart. The threat of nuclear weapons in Iraq was the president's main reason for going to war. A new government report on Iraq is out tonight, and it does not look good for the U.S., which is pumping billions to restructure the country post-war. It finds that worst-case uh, civil war, the best case, still a dangerous situation. Situation. The report was made for the CIA, but it was leaked to the New York Times. 
An education alert tonight. Technology can be wonderful, but teachers are starting to see kids abusing it to try and cheat. That's why a new state job is opening up to try and stop the various testing problems. Action News reporter Kim Sherwood went inside the classroom today and she has this story. Look in any classroom and you can see that school days are changing. High tech is everywhere, but now the crackdown is on to make sure kids are not taking advantage of high technology during big tests. Keep writing until our four minutes is up. Giving tests in the classroom these days is becoming a real test for teachers as well. It's, it's basically being interactive in the classroom, being on your feet and rolling around to make sure you know exactly what's happening in the classroom. Valley High School teacher Antonio Rael will tell you that sneaky kids no longer just write the answers on their hands or use cheat sheets for tests. These days, students have access to picture phones, text messaging, even PDAs for quick information. And take a look at this, the newest in technology from HP. This gives you instant internet access. There's a camera on the back. It gives you telephone access. You've got your text messaging here. It's all at the push of a button. High tech is probably the easiest way to cheat and the fastest. And students tell us more and more kids are taking chances and getting wired into answers using high technology. Now officials say high tech cheating is not a widespread problem right now, but with all the advances in technology, the state officials just want to make sure that it doesn't become a problem. There you go. Beautiful. That's why the state has now approved money to hire a watchdog to try and curb high tech cheating and various testing problems. Kim Sherwood, Channel 13, Action News. A lot more to low tech. This, a cow rescue in California with rescuers on their hands and knees trying to bring the animal back to life. That was the crew pulling the cow out of a well, but the real story starts right now. The cow went into full cardiac arrest. Rescuers use CPR and the full force of their knees to do chest compressions on the cow. It worked. The cow made it. Now, Nate Tannenbaum with Channel 13 Action Weather. Well, there's your good news for the day. Beautiful day here, and we've got more where that came from. Going to get very windy in between, though. Not right away, probably beginning on Saturday. Let's take a look at your 11 o'clock numbers. Nice night out. We're at 85. Humidity is at 20%. No wind to speak of right now out of the south at 7. The barometer is rising to 9.81. I wanted to go back to that hurricane name thing because I don't want to leave you confused. How could there be a hurricane Jean and a hurricane Javier when both of them begin with the letter J? Well, the way the National Hurricane Center works is there are basically 11 different lists of names for storms all around the world. This list is for storms in the Atlantic. Remember Alex, Bonnie, Charlie, Danielle, Earl, Francis, Gaston, Hermine, Ivan, Jean, and right now there is Tropical Storm Carl, but over on the other side of the world in the Pacific, there's another list of names that went Agatha, Blas, Celia, Darby, Estelle, Fran uh, Frank, uh, Georgette, Howard, Isis and Javier, the next one would be K. So basically there are multiple lists that the National Hurricane Center uses over a six year period. Our high today, a very warm 99 after a low this morning of 75. There's really not a whole lot going on out there, but we're continuing to keep an eye up in the Pacific Northwest for more rain to come down our way, but to stay to the north, it's gonna be the wind and the cooler air that you'll be noticing beginning again on Saturday. For the rest of tonight, a 73 a clear sky when you're getting up on your finally Friday. During the day tomorrow, we think the high temperature will back off a few degrees from the 99 that we had today, and the winds could pick up out of the south to 20 miles an hour. And over the next seven days, look out for maybe 40 mile an hour winds Saturday and Sunday, and the high temperature dropping down to 80 Monday, 79 Tuesday, wow. and maybe even the upper 50s for the low on Tuesday morning. How about that? Well, fall is starting in a little while. It, yeah, is. it is. Another week and a week and a half. Uh, yeah. September 22nd, 930 in the morning. See, so you got it down. I I finally get to wear that jacket I just bought. Yeah, yeah. You're happy about that. All right. Nate, well, you never, you never want to hear the words, you're fired. I don't know. There are some days. No, not really. Yeah, really. <laughs> Unless you're watching Donald Trump on TV, then it's okay. He may be suing ABC now. Yeah, Ross, it's a challenge in journalism. Fact versus fiction. Donald says ABC ended up on the wrong side of the line. We'll take a look back at Primetime's controversial piece coming up. He's on top of the media world with his hit reality show, The Apprentice. But tonight, Primetime Live questioned Donald Trump's real power in the boardroom. Action News reporter Scott Burton with another look at the story that may have ABC's lawyers busy for a while. Scott? Well, Trisha, the plot of land actually behind us right here is where Donald Trump says he's going to build a new resort and condo complex. It's a classic Trump development, but tonight ABC questioned the man behind the hotel. Is he the classic businessman or simply his own perception, his own perfection? 
fiction of reality. And the question now is, will the report land ABC in the courtroom? How's your shrimp? Everyone fine? Great. Donald Trump. If you watch The Apprentice, he's the best businessman in the world. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. Okay. But if you watch Primetime Live tonight, you might just have some questions. He borrowed too much money. The Taj Mahal was an ugly child. Maybe in his reality, what he's saying is true. Chris Cuomo's report on Trump's business practices hammered away at the Donald's true net worth, his recent bankruptcy filing, even the amount of land Donald Trump really owns in Manhattan. My name is Donald Trump, and I'm the largest developer in New York. Our analysis of units already built clearly shows other developers are ahead of Trump. When Donald says, I own something, take out a magnifying glass. Uh, because if you pay attention to the details, he sometimes has an ownership interest. According to ABC, Cuomo's report was comprehensive. In Trump's eyes, it was defamatory. He threatened to sue. Cuomo called it another Trump control tactic. Trump accused me of having a bias against him because of negative statements he said about my father, New York's former governor. He threatened to sue ABC, me, and my father. Chris Cuomo says he was assigned the piece and has no axe to grind, but ABC believes Trump's lawsuits are no joke. So will the high-rise pioneer take the mouse's network to court? Maybe that will be the next reality show. Now, ABC is sticking behind the piece. Chris Cuomo says he repeatedly asked Donald Trump for a series of interviews. Trump says NBC would not let him do an on-camera interview with another network. Pretty live. President Bush and I approve this message. <laughs> yes. Listen, you guys, have a great night. Um, what is tomorrow? Friday. Finally. Finally. Friday. I keep <laughs> reminding you of that all the time. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow night live at 11.